Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Baseline Podcast Show, you know, where we bring planners on the show to, you know, talk about, you know, project planning and control. And the, the basis of this is just to, you know, give those out there, you know, listeners out there and guys, I want the guys are watching this as well, just to give them a thing about, you know, what, what planning is. You've got this about planning, you know, and, and on this show, you know, we're bringing guests, guests that have been, been planners for years, you know, they'll, they'll come on the show to share their journey and their story in a way, you know, we can take a thing or two from their journey and their story, you know, and on a particular episode, my very first episode, guys, you know, I've got Tom here, Tom Rain. Tom is a, is a, is a senior planner. He's been in the game for years now, you know, and Tom is going to come on the show to share his journey, you know, and his story. Hopefully, you know, Tom will give us some great nuggets to take out of the show. Tom, welcome to the show, my brother. Hi, Akez. How's it going? Uh, yeah. No, thanks for having me on. Really, uh, really honored to be here on your first, uh, first baseline podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, just to introduce myself, I've um, been a planner, doing a lot of work on uh, on High Speed Two over the last couple of years. Um, although I guess I started out in the more in the controls world in uh, in aerospace and defence um, up at BAE Systems up in Preston, um, before moving over back back home to Birmingham. Uh, obviously, a lot a lot of work on High Speed Two there. Been on that for the past couple of years. Uh, and before I moved up to up to Preston to join the controls world, I'd done a lot of work on uh, on construction sites as a labourer. Um, and yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was me. Sort of um, went to went to try and get a plumbing apprenticeship. Strangely enough, uh, and found myself in project controls. Had no uh, no intention of ending up here. Yeah, over the years, just developed a developed a skill set and uh, fell into planning really by accident. And uh, yeah, I'm here today speaking with you on your uh, your first podcast. <laughs> thanks, Tom. Thanks, man. You know, you know, starting out, you know, there's there's always this thing of you know, oh, what what do I want to do? Especially when you just come, when you just get out of school, you know, you, you want to mm-hmm. probably put your hands in so many things. You know, you want to you, you want you want to do a whole lot of stuff. You know, and most of those things can be true recommendation as well. You know, and you just mentioned that you wanted to you set out to be a plumber. But mm-hmm. was that the only thing you, you wanted to you wanted to do at the initial stage? So yeah, uh, to be honest, I'd um, I'd set out and I'd looked for an apprenticeship back in I think it was God it was about twenty eleven. Um, I'd I'd actually left school for a couple of years, um, and I just I just messed around really, done a couple of odd jobs. Uh, I was doing a lot of labouring on um on construction sites. I was uh, I was working with my mate Paddy who was a plumber, and I was like, you know, I want to go out. Maybe I'll go and do a bit of this. Uh, and I searched the government website looking for uh, looking for a plumbing apprenticeship. But back then it was like ninety pound a week to be a plumber, and I was thinking I can't pay the rent with that. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I saw underneath it this thing uh, this thing advertised. It was uh, it was called the Project Controls Foundation Scheme up at um, up at BAE Systems in Preston. And I thought, well, I'll just I'll, I'll whack a CV and do you know what I mean. I didn't really think anything more of it. Um, didn't hear back for weeks, and I got to get a phone call. I'm like, are you, "You're coming for an interview?" It's like, "Well, yeah, sure." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay. and then, you know, like six to eight weeks later, I was working on um, on the Typhoon program, uh, the Eurofighter Typhoon program, um, doing project controls for um, the design and maintenance and production of uh, of military aircraft, and then gradually moved um, moved over to the the F thirty five program with um, uh, over at Salisbury and um yeah met some met some great lifelong friends um yeah eventually to be fair I just wanted to come home you know I've been working away then for four or five years and um you know I, I'd um got my got my degree in project management which they were you know very very kind to put me through um did that at, at, um, at Blackpool College accredited by the University of Lancaster um, and it was there really, to be fair, um, that I, I, I was really introduced to the concepts of planning. I didn't really, um, during, during my first couple of, couple of years, at least on the apprenticeship, didn't really touch planning. I was more sort of, um, more sort of controls focused. So while we had a scheduler that would, that would give us schedules, we were very, very much cranking the handle on earned value management and, and doing that kind of stuff. Um, Eventually, I sort of gained an awareness of planning and used a little bit of, uh, of MSP, but it was only really when I moved back to Birmingham. 
um, I work for a, a consultancy called Logical um, that, that I really, you know, I kind of told them that I could do a bit of planning, probably in ignorance. I was like, yeah, I can do planning. <laughs> no problem. They were very much like, well, you're a planner now. Here's P6. Uh, go. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> <Oops. laughs> uh, better, learn better learn to use this then. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, Tom. But but it was starting like in the beginning, you know. You you knowing that you had no skills, you know, there was no skill set in the beginning. Did that phase you off in any way? Yeah, it did. I'm go I'm not gonna lie. Um I was very lucky in the the um the people that I was working with, like some more experienced planners. Um, I was working with a lady called Sam um, and she she kind of took me under her wing. She could see that I knew nothing. Like she was like, oh my God, what's this kid doing? Um, and she kind of took me under her wing and like showed me, showed me the right ways. And I was very lucky with some of the clients that I'd had as well, that they could see that maybe I, I was just starting out and they were maybe a little bit more lenient with me, gave me some tips, gave me some pointers um, and actually showed me that it's actually a lot of the time, the, the more relationship-based aspects of planning um you know I'll, I'll never forget um one of one of the very first clients uh, i'd had the two, I, I still call them the two andes now and you kind of only ever used to see them together um there were two two planners called andy and they would um they, they knew that i was obviously new and what the, i'd be putting in programs that maybe had a couple of problems in it and what, what they decided to do is put a draft in so say look tom give us a draft of what you're putting in and we'll pre-mark it and kind of let you know where you've got problems rather than, I mean, they didn't have to do that. That that was extra work that they'd done, but they saw that I was going the extra mile and really trying. And I think they, they used to sit and, and, and help me kind of, you know, well, well, look, don't, don't put this in because we'll have to reject you. You know, we'll have to not accept your program or, you know, uh, you know, you've got this wrong here. You've got to, oh, look, don't, don't do that. You idiot. You've got a loop. What's that? You know, come on. Right. And, um, but, but this was, they, they, they'd kind of did this relationship based aspect of, of, of building, building trust, building. Um, and you'd always go the extra mile for them then as well, you know, and make sure your program is really good because they've given you, they cut you that slack at the start and given you that leg up. Um, the, 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 yeah, they, they, they were really, I mean, you never kind of forget that, do you? You know what I mean? When someone's gone out of the way to help you. They didn't have to do that. You know, they could have literally just not accepted the program, gone, this kid doesn't know what he's doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's no good. Get him off the side. And, you know, you, you sometimes do see, you sometimes do see that behavior. You know, it, it, people with a lot, uh, like a lack of patience and a lack of, you know, uh, but, but you, you've got to remember that everybody was starting out once and, um, and, and try and, you know, try and try and be lenient where you can. And, and, and not just lenient for no, no reason. Um, actually trying to help and point out and improve and explain to people why things are wrong not just that they're wrong um, and I think when you do that people remember like you memorize like ah right that's why you don't do it like that you know um, you take the time and actually they, they, they spread the knowledge and then you know you know five six years later you find yourself explaining it to others the way they explained <laughs> it to you you know like you, yeah. you're going on like you're some sort of wise old jedi you know like ah you know don't yeah, put these yeah. negative lags in <laughs> like, oh, why oh the andy said <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah 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 absolutely, absolutely tom you know it, it was great you know initially you had you had people that would hold your hands, you know, that would that would mm -hmm. sort of, you know, help you cross the other side of the road, you know. Likewise, me as well, you know, starting out, I had that as well. There was um this planner, senior planner, Shafiq, that was his name, Shafiq Mohammed, you know. He was one of those guys mm -hmm. that actually, and he's also a mentor to me, even, even, even till now, you know, he's also a mentor mm -hmm. to me. And I also have another mentor, again, um, Shan, Shan Khan. You know, Shan, Shan is, a, is a good planning manager as well you know so i had those guys initially when i started and those were the guys that mm -hmm. actually told me kes you know do it this way don't do it that way this is what you're supposed to do you know they they all they they, they actually taught me the ropes you know ta ta mm -hmm. taught me taught me how to climb you know and 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 it's it's, it's, it's good you know to have those guys initially because mm -hmm. when you don't have this kind of people you know starting out guys will just kick you around and say oh man mm -hmm. get rid of him you know he, he doesn't know the job anyway mm -hmm. What was the use of keeping ball? When you have guys like you, oh. like that around you, you know, you'll be able to at, at least learn, you know, and progress in your career, mm -hmm. you know? So starting out, you know, improving your skills, you know, to at least, at least to, to be more employ employable, you know, why, why mm -hmm. do you think planners need to improve on their skill sets? So I think like, yeah, the, the constant, I think you've just talk, talked about climbing there and you're right. I think, one of the main things that these these mentors often do 
is they give you the tools to, to, to climb for yourself, not necessarily push you up. You know, the, 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 this is, that's where it's really effective. Um, and, and actually, you know, giving you the tools to help yourself and drive on your own, um, your own career path and do your own learning. It's fundamental when answering your question about why um, why we've got to continue to push our skill sets. You know, we're sat now. I mean, the world over the last you know 10, 20 years has changed massively. You know, I, I went to school under a system that was still prepped for you to go into the local factory. You know, like and, and work in work in your local area. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I come from from Northfield, Rubri, um, in Birmingham, around there, and we used to have the uh, the Rover factory. And that shut down in like the, the late, late 90s, early 2000s. And that was a big hit to the local local, local economy. Um, and, and that was really what our schooling was geared for. It was it was to teach you just enough maths and English that, that you did to needed to do the jobs in the factories. But really, that schooling was already outdated. You know, um, the world had already changed by the late 90s, early 2000s. We we're in a global world now, competing in a sort of global marketplace. And you've got to be the best at what you do because companies will hire from a global talent pool now and you've got to consistently be best because best practices will come and change and there's been such a global community built that innovations spread quicker so you can get behind the curve quicker you know you can become outdated a lot quicker than you could 20 30 years ago when things were written down in books maybe you had to buy the book or know the person that had done the innovation for it to spread now somebody in New Zealand or Nigeria or Nicaragua can literally come up with an innovation and overnight your, your industry can, can change. And you've got to, you've got to be able to keep on top of that. And um, Absolutely. It, it's, it, you know, and, and that's, that's why we've got to continue to, to, you know, and it's these, these mentors, like you were saying, that gave you the tools to learn, to climb for yourself. Um, they're the really important ones. I remember, you know, um, a, a real real close friend of mine Hassan. he um he was uh he was the planning manager on the job with, with the two andes that i was talking about and sometimes i'd come to Hassan, i'd be like Hassan, i don't know how to do this i don't know how to do this kind of half expecting him to give you the answer and he wouldn't he'd give you like a riddle or a clue <laughs> and you'd be like oh. but it, that riddle or clue would leave you down lead you down the path where you needed to get the answer and in some ways that's way more effective when helping people than doing it for them because you're teaching them to think for themselves and solve their own problems while still being helpful. Because if you just do it for them, they're not going to learn the skills and they'll constantly come to you. And in a way you almost hamper your own effectiveness. Whereas when you're teaching people how to learn new skills and how to push and where to look, um, that's where you can get this real, you know, you, you can really run away and get the, get the additional value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and of course, you know, learning new skills, change, change is one thing that is constant in life. You know? and, and to be fair, not everybody loves change. Some people are very foreign to change, you know, but, but for you, you know, starting out, you know, initial stage of a career, what would you say were some of the challenges you faced starting out? So I think, um, yeah, really in terms of the, the if, I, if I sort of boxed my career in and just, just talk about the planning aspect, one of the um, one of the major challenges I think the, the the all planners face when they first start planning is balancing the workload because when you're in that update week, <laughs> you know, I, I swap battle stories with planners. I'm sure we will after this podcast. You'll be like that time you were up against it and you worked through the night. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. like I have a I have an on run like a, a long running banter with uh, with another planner. And we tell it like almost like Vietnam War flashbacks out of the movies. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, and um, yeah, it's, it's balancing that, balancing that, you know, you, especially when you don't have the skills, you end up cramming and you end up doing things by hand. I remember I used to, you know, like I, <laughs> the first couple of updates, I used to sit there in Primavera and like tick the start date, tick the finish date, tick the start date, tick, you know, thousands of activities. I'd be like, how are you ever supposed to do this? But I couldn't admit failure. I couldn't uh, turn up the next day and be like, oh, I couldn't, couldn't do it on time. Um, so you'd end up working through the night. And I think that was that was one of the, you know, and actually it ties back to the last, um, the last question you asked, which is, you know, we, we, we in, in terms of why do we need to constantly hone our skills, it's become more efficient. 
and actually you learn new ways and eventually somebody shows you how to do imports <laughs> do you know what i mean and then you're like oh all right my life's changed now right brilliant <laughs> well why did nobody tell me this before um it was very similar when i learned um one of the things I picked up quite early, and it was only because it was like the hot topic at the time a couple of years ago, was uh, Microsoft Power BI. Um, so I, I picked that up, not really knowing how new it was. Um, and, and I'd kind of learned to read uh, read an XER file into, into Power BI a couple of years ago. I mean, it, p- people do it now. But to be fair, back then, there weren't. I, I didn't really see... Um, I yeah, put my hands up. I didn't really see many people doing it. You know, So, so I'd done this... I brought it in and um, I remember um, I remember sitting doing data transformations for, you know, it must have been about 500 columns manually, one by one. <laughs> and um, eventually it was, um, it, it, to be fair, it was Hassan that came and said, why don't you just pivot the columns, and just do the data transformation on one column. And like, I'd stayed up all night doing this thing. And it's where, where they show you, um, really, it, it's having... Well, I was saying about how people showing you how to climb rather than rather than just boosting you straight to the top of the mountain. Um, I realized why we handle data in that manner and do things um, and unpivot columns. And it's one thing I always teach new people when, I, when I'm doing I'm doing Power BI. Um, I actually let them do it the wrong way and spend, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes doing something repetitive and tedious. And then, and you come along, Gandalf, just go like, oh. and I look at you like, what did he just do? Like, uh, <laughs> and um, like that, same with Primavera. And this is this is one thing that we we we, you know, uh, you, we still struggle with work life balance as planners. You always will, but when once you can, you know, bring in some of these these skills, especially and I know old hat, but we've got to face the reality that Excel is still you know used by ninety five percent of the business world as the you know information exchange yeah, medium yes, of yes. choice and yeah. um when you can learn some high-end excel skills you can make your life easier <laughs> um you know you can definitely speed things up and help your updates and and um really help to bridge that work-life balance and not have to stay up all night doing updates um which that you know it, 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 you burn out otherwise you will burn out you know it, it's something that I, i'd recommend to all all sort of aspiring planners is is learn how to do your updates more efficiently and handle your work-life balance because nobody nobody's giving you a badge for how many hours you will work do you know what i mean like it's just sad <laughs> don't do it i mean <laughs> like, I st- like i still do sometimes but i think that's like I'm doing, like i've got my own business now and i think that's like i'll do my day's work at work and then go home and do my business work if you know what i mean and like but that's different you know i'm happy to do that that's like but when it was you're doing it for a job and you're working that many hours it's different isn't it it's not as you're not choosing to be there you're just doing unpaid overtime and um Mm -hmm. if you can get better and quicker and and automate certain things and make yourself more that's not necessarily automation it's just like personal effectiveness staying sharp and staying fresh and that was definitely a challenge that that i had to overcome early in my career was, was that sort of fatigue especially being dropped as i said learning you know, but maybe maybe having blagged a little bit, of the, you know, <laughs> having to having to deliver, but not necessarily having the skills. You had to like that. You have to grind it, you know. And um, yeah, I think it's yeah, definitely definitely something I've learned. Um, yeah, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tom, right, man. And um, talking about getting better, you know, and staying true to yourself in terms of you know planning planners, you know, is there any such thing like a good planner or a or a bad planner from your own perspective? Yeah, there's almost a, a perception, and I've heard a lot of people. You'll, you know, in the in the planning industry, you'll have heard the word P six jockey, um, and it, it's 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 a you know to, to non planners that, that might be listening, it's a derogatory term for planners who just know the software. They've just learned P six. They're not necessarily you know planning is way more than that. You know, it's the it's the negotiation skills, it's the commercial awareness, it's the um, getting people together well. yeah procurement it's you know coming up with like mitigation strategies it's creative thinking the software is is a part of it yeah and it does help if you if you're decent with the software but there is a sub subset of planners that are just have just learned the software and they just know how to manipulate the information in such a way um now 
I think it's a little bit overused. Like, I think it's it's very easy to sit and call somebody a P6 jockey. You know, I think it's, but at the same time, it is a very real thing. <laughs> like, it, it is, and it, it does happen, especially where you get accidental planners. I think where you'll get somebody who maybe was just given P6 as a part of their job. Maybe they were a project manager, and then it's like, well, you're going to be the planner as well. And then they, they learn a little bit of P6 and... um. But I think to be a good planner, you need to have at least two of three skills. Uh, so you can miss one of them. If you've got all three, you're a brilliant planner. You know what I mean? Or, or you're on the, you've got all the ingredients to be a brilliant planner. There's still the personality aspect. But the three skills I sort of think are you need, you need to have either you know, deep uh, in engineering or construction knowledge. That helps. You know, if you understand design or you understand construction, that helps. Um, the other one is the is the software skills that we've just talked about. Um, it's the um, yeah the ability to use Primavera or manipulate information, data, and uh, uh, and put things in a succinct way. And the third skill I think is the sort of interpersonal skills. It's the relationship building that we sort of talked about earlier. It's the sometimes it's negotiation and political um, political posturing in the sense that the program is always a political tool. You know, at the same in in the sense that it is a shared reality that everybody congeals around, and and it in that sense, it's it, there's always a little bit of um, of politics around there, and I think you can get by with at least two or out of those three skills, um, but if you're missing more than two, like if you, you are just an engineering or construction person, but you're not very good with software and you're not very good with people, you're not going to be a very good planner. If you are just good at software, but you, again, you've got no engineering knowledge or, or you've got no um, no interpersonal skills, not be a very good planner. And if you've just got interpersonal skills, but you've got no software skills or, or no um, uh, no engineering or construction knowledge, you won't be a good planner. But you can pick any two of those and you'll get a sort of blend. Um, you know, great if you've got all three. Personally, I don't. I mean, I literally know nothing about engineering or construction or everything that I do know I've learned through being a planner. Do you know what I mean? Just learned through, um, learn on the job. I mean, you could literally tell me, you know, something built out of Lego by fairies in the night and I have to kind of go, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, oh yeah, it's built by fairies in the night, out of Lego, yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I'm good with software and I, I can chat a bit and that's the kind of planner that I am, you know, but there's there's, there's other planners that might necessarily be that they're solid, or good with software men are not so good at doing the, the people side of it but they will sit and churn out an update and understand where things don't look right and hang on but, but then there's other planners maybe who are great communicators and great you know um and great construction professionals and they can talk and understand and get the plan in but they can't use primavera uh but they can get around that because they can get somebody you know you can have maybe a, a graduate with them who does know primavera or you know another planner that, that you know and you, you, you can this is why we have planning teams as well, because there's different types of planners that all mesh together. And as long as you've got all of those bases covered, you know, generally you've you've got a you've got a good planning team. I think that's uh, it's just just my you know, in like, like little little bit of insight onto to how I think things work. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks for that, Tom. You know, but yeah. so would you say you know having the soft skills, which is the software side of it, engineering and construction, and building relationships as well you know would you say those are the good characteristics of a good planner i would say out of the three uh three of those skills uh you know the, the software the knowledge and the 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 the, um, the soft skills i'd say the soft skills are actually the most overlooked um but they are also uh, they are also the most important because especially around there's another aspect outside of the skills. There's the personality traits that I think are, that make a good planner. Um, and a lot of that is, is around um, kind of being a good communicator, uh, being able to, to, to get information from a variety of sources, build relationships with lots and lots of different people. You know, you need everybody on the project to be able to give you an update. 
you know, to, to give you a good update, you've got to go, you can't just sit with like one design manager or one project manager, and get them to tell you and put it into P6. That's when you're being a P6 jockey, in my, in my personal opinion, is you are just taking some, what somebody else is saying and putting it into a software. You know, at some point, if that person can just learn to use the software, they don't need you. Where the great planners are that I've seen really um, make Flourish. a difference is, yep. yeah, they, they go out and they build relationships with procurement. They go out and they build relationships with the construction teams, with the design teams, with commercial, with, um, you know, with the, the quality guys. And they go around and they get a 360 view of the project, you know. Um, um, yeah. And, and it's been able to communicate informally and formally, too, because, um, you know, you get a lot of... You, you get a lot of uh, progress updates in in meetings and, and things. And a lot of the time in meetings, people tow the party line. You know, you, you get, yes, we're we not delayed. Everything's on track. You know, you know and it, I mean, I, I don't smoke anymore. I gave up at the start of the pandemic, but I used to stand outside the building. Like, and I used to just literally smoke, like chain smoke. <laughs> like, um, but you'd catch people as they were coming in that building. Oh, yeah, come here. You know, what's going on with such and such? And people would tell you because you were in the meeting. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd, you'd kind of get the update and understand things that maybe they wouldn't be able to tell you or wouldn't feel comfortable telling you in a meeting. Now, you've got to take that as confidence, man. You can't just go and like, set, you, you know, you, you've got to go and verify that and check that. And, you know, it, it's been able to communicate informally like that but then also being able to communicate formally in meetings and be able to, to know, hang on, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're talking to a client here or we're talking to a customer or we are, you know, we're in a professional environment. It's been able to mix up that communication style. And um, I think that is a, you know, part of the soft skills, but there's also a sort of personality trait there too, which is, you know, that, that ability to form relationships Um yeah it is a soft skill but there's also a um there's also a, a, a character type and it's a little bit of nosiness as well like what's going on over here let's have a little wander over here see what's happening you know I, that, that, I mean, we all work from home now you know but like we um back in the office like one thing like I, I always i was always told very early on i think it was sam uh one of the very first planners i ever worked with told me if you're at your desk right and you sat on your own as a planner you're a rubbish planner. You need to be never at your desk. You need to be either in meetings with people. You need to be at other people's desks working out what's going on. You know, get up, get about, start talk, chatting to people. And I used to take that as a mantra and just be like, I'm never going to be at my desk. You know, always be like chatting to people, finding out what's going on. You know, um, just turn up, just like kind of like walk into like, well, I need to know about that. So I'm going to get myself an invite to that meeting and go and just sit in and listen. Yeah, you know, yeah, and you, you know, you, you eventually get to walk around into. Well, I'm the planner, I can walk into this room. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's almost you need to be able to kind of like walk into any meeting on the job if you want to. Um, and the, it, 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 there's a little bit of you know, there's a little bit of a personality trait there as well, which is a bit, a bit cheeky, like or a bit like, well, I'm, I'm just gonna do it, like, like, and um, yeah, you know, you can wait to be invited or you can just kind of crash it, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, as well. You put like, likewise, myself, you know, starting how I started you know, out in the early stages of my career, you know, towards being a planner was, you know, I was kind of like on the tools on site, just like a labor on site, you know, so I started out working on site, you know, so going to site, uh, me, speaking with the engineers, I'm not sure about that because I, I because that's where I started, you know, I actually started clearing sites, you know, cleaning up the site and, you know, washing up and using all that stuff on site, you know, so, so I actually started from, started from the bottom, you know, to mm -hmm. say, you know, so, now, you know, progressing as a planner, I always make it as a point of, you know, reference for me to say, do you know what, Kes, this is where you started, you know, never forget where you started from, you know, so mm -hmm. I always go on site, you know, now on my, on my current job, you know, I always, I always, I always go on site with the, with the electrical guys, you know, with mm -hmm. the, with the mechanical guys as well, you know, with the site engineers, mm -hmm. you know, with the, with the, with the project manager, we, all, we often mm -hmm. go on site, you know, because to see what's going on, because it's like, for me, yeah, it's like someone gives you a car to drive, right? Just say, Kes, here's the car, take the car. And you don't know how to, you don't know anything about the car. You know, how are you going to drive that car? Yeah, when yeah, it, exactly. When, when, yeah, when, whenever something goes wrong in that car, you'll be able to troubleshoot. Like, okay, there's there's no water in the radiator. You know, maybe the the, the, the light is off. And there, there, there are certain things you should learn about that car, you know, before, you know, driving that car. 
Yeah, you, you need to. Um, you, you're right. I think, especially you, your analogy, like, but you're saying you you were uh, you were on site. Um, you know, you started off on the tools. Um, you're right. The people on the tools know what's going on on the job more than the people at the top. <laughs> like, they're the people who see it day to day. You can go and ask them, like, when's this coming? And they'll tell you, it ain't coming next week. You know, so, such and such is blocked or such and such company's gone bust. They're the people on the job that know what's going on. And if you can forge relationships and get out and talk to them, um, sometimes they will have information that's more useful than management because ultimately information flows from the bottom to the top um in 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 terms of in terms of updates especially um and sometimes as well um in terms of mitigation strategies and stuff like that so it's it's very easy for us to sit in an office and you know how are we going to get this project back on track and we sit and come out with it sometimes you go and speak to the guys and they'll be like well i'll do it like this <laughs> you know and they they already know uh, but there's something blocking them like there's there's some something they're not allowed to do otherwise they'd go and do it you know people ain't sat around waiting for permission you know um but sometimes they will have a solution that they just can't get done and if you can get that you know, you can get their support and get them to um empower get you know, sort, sort of um no no i'm not empowered but you, you go and present their solution and say well hang on the guys inside are saying they can do it this way or the guys doing the design say if we split this package up like this you know they know more about it than you you know they they, they work the detail um and actually it's sometimes your job to act as that link between the people making the decisions and the people doing the work and actually um you can you have a lot of influence over the project that way especially when it comes to mitigation strategies um and and getting things back on track um because ultimately the plan is where everything congeals and this is where we're this is what we're going to work this is how we're going to solve things um and yeah it, it, it as you say it is it is forging those relationships and i think we both you know both, both of us were on the tools early in our career um i think that that kind of that kind of helps because you don't forget where you came from, do you? Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. You know, but, yeah. but haven't, I haven't said that, Tom, you know, I, I know we've touched on, you know, if you want to be a good planner, you should be able to go on site, you know, and and see things for yourself. But mm. but for me, what what I've seen over over the years, you know, with with senior management, like the like the planning manager or some senior planners as well, you know, I I, I would say that, you know, for me, I I feel that um those in the senior management position, you know, I think a uh, compl complicity sets in, you know, because they don't tend to go on site that often because maybe they feel that, oh, I, I, I know what's going on already, you know, I don't really have to go, you know, but, but for you, do you, do you think it's something they should do more often? Yeah. Um, and I, I do, I do think that. I think it, it should be done um, not just for an exercise in itself. I think it, you know, it is genuinely useful. Um, you know, we, we, I mean, I'm on, I'm on a design contract at the moment. Um, and we're just getting back to going into the office after the pandemic. But last week I solved a problem that would have taken me all day to solve in 20 minutes just because we're in the office together. You know, we can pull something up on screen. Um, you know, what's this? What's that? You know, have a chat, move things around. You're in the physical world. The energy is different. And actually, um, it's, it makes you realize if we're getting that just from, being in the office from working at home, how the, the similar principles apply to site work. You know, um, if you can get out and actually look and you know physically be on site, um, be in the environment where the problems are, um, it, it it unlocks a different mode of thinking, um, and it, it definitely definitely is something that is is. You're right. It, complacency sets in. You know, it'd be very easy for us all to be like, well, we work from home now um and and you know it is easy isn't it do you know what i mean like it's 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 you know, it's easy to easy to get into that complacent complacent mode but yeah you're right um and it, back onto relationships you can forge relationships in person that you maybe don't get over teams uh or or, or over zoom or over skype it, it, that context of like body language of you know it it's lost a little bit it is something that um you unless you are you know if you're a senior you know if you're a planning manager and you're ringing up site you're just the guy that's hassling them for stuff you know 
if you're the guy who goes down to site, has a laugh, has a joke, you know, next time you call, yeah, you know, oh, it's so and so, he's all right. Yeah, we'll give him the answer. You know, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You're not just a faceless pain in the butt asking questions. You know what I mean? Like you, you're, um, yeah, you know, you, you're a person with a face with a, you know, you know that, that they know, and it, it it does help. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 Tom. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for you, for you, you know, do you like when you've been a planner for like a couple of years, maybe assist, probably starting like a junior planner or assistant planner, you know, and you've been there like two or three years, you know, but do you think there's actually a timeline, you know, in terms of progressing as a planner? Because uh, some people can be in a, in a planning, in a junior planning role for like a year or two and they're, they're mm-hmm. just there, just, just there, you know, but do you think there's a timeline to that? I think it's a difficult one because it, my, my experience of it is that progression in planning is often not linear. Um, I think you can end up, you could learn six months worth of lessons on a particularly hard project or a particularly hard update very, very in a very short space of time. And then if things are going relatively well and you're not, you know, you're on a project maybe where you're not having to push yourself and it's not that difficult and you've done it before um, you gain experience, but are you gaining new experience? You know, that's where, I think the difference is like you are, you know, you, you can get, you can spend the time served doing the same thing over and over. Again. Um, and you'll always learn something, but it's those new experiences or those difficult projects, you know, the, the horror show where you get dropped in like, Oh my, my God, what am I going to do here? You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, they're the ones where you can really you know, challenge yourself but progress um make progress at the same time and um it, it's never a straight line progress in planning you know um and i think again back to back to mentors i think was the um that's again it, it's invaluable if you could check in with your mentors every two or three months and you know earlier a lot earlier in my career um i didn't like the word mentors you know i worked for for bae systems brilliant company absolutely fantastic company to work for but they, they the, the the culture was fairly corporate fairly you know and they would assign you mentors and stuff like that and i never felt like it was for me like i was just like what am i going to talk to them about you know what i mean like well, i don't want a mentor I, you know, I just want to come and do my work and like, i'll learn you know what, I mean? like, what am i going to but in planning, like you have to have mentors and in a way you don't get assigned them. Like I was saying, like in a corporate culture, you just find them. Like they're just the people who teach you and you just kind of latch onto it. <laughs> like, like, you choose your mentors rather than your, you know, like it's, it, uh, you know, like, I tell you what, that guy's smart or that lass is smart. I'm going to, I'm going to like latch onto like, I'm going to follow them now. Like you just kind of, um, you know, you, you end up watching what they do and, uh, yeah, and pick absolutely, it up. And, absolutely. Especially when you get, especially when you get to work with them, you'll learn loads. But it's always good to sort of check in a couple of years, every year, every six months, every year, because these people that are smart that you 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 know, I've mentioned a few of them: the the Andes, Hassan, um, Giancarlo Duran's another one. He's um, he, he's up for project controls professor. Yeah, minute. Um, he's a, he's a fantastic planner, brilliant at Power BI, absolutely you know, and one of the nicest people as well. Uh, and yeah, we'll check in from time to time, and I'll be like, these people are constantly teaching themselves new skills. So you just check in and be like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what are you learning now? And they'll show you, and you're like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. And he constantly make videos and plan your new content, and um, it's the ability to sort of do, like like these are the people that you'll learn from, um, and that's where you'll get progression because again, they're teaching you to climb. And your progression is defined by your own ability, not just ability, your own will to carry out. You know what I mean? And that's what I'd say to junior planners is, um, you know, if you want to progress, get yourself somebody to teach you how to climb. You know what I mean? Like, teach you how to climb better. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't um, don't necessarily just climb like a madman. Do you know what I mean? Like, like get somebody to teach you how to how to progress What's the best route up. You know. Um, I mean, one thing, I mean, I probably preach it more than I practice it, um, but I did a little course in Python. Um, you know, I did a little course in sort of machine learning, AI, and part of that was learning a bit of Python. And I looked at it and I was like, if I was a kid now, I wouldn't learn Excel. Like, I'd, I'd just go straight to Python. Like, everything in 20 years' time will be done in Python. 
Um, and I'd be like, th- this is where I'm saying like climb better, you know, like, I, I, you know, I could sit and teach a kid everything I know about Excel. And I'd be like, ah, you know, it, it, to be fair, he's only, a, you know, 1% of Excel. If I use 1% of Excel, that's it. But as you, as you probably know, when you're on a, on a job, you know, you whip out power query and, and pivot charts and stuff. And people are, like, oh, wow, well, you know, macros and stuff. But there are people out there that genuinely can like speak Excel. Do you know what I mean? Like they, 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 um, they just know it inside out. And like the more you, the more you learn, the more you realize the less you know. Do you know what I mean? Like that it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, wow, yeah, I'm yeah. Re- really not that clever. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and when I'm saying like, yeah, oh, I could I could sit and teach a junior planner all of that, but why? Just go and learn, go and learn, teach, go, go and go and speak to Hassan Imam and learn yourself Python. Do you know what I mean? Like because w- within six months you'll have learned what it took me it, ten years to do in Excel. Do you know what I mean? Like it's get yourself people that will get you up the mountain quicker um, rather than running at the mountain harder. Um, and that's absolutely. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Tom. Uh, you've 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 mentioned the Power BI and Python, you know, and and all that latest in, innovation, you know, AI and, and stuff as well, you know. But for, for planning, you know, coming to planning if, and and being efficient in planning as well, you know, um, would you say four D planning is a new thing in planning? Um, I would say. Uh, there's a lot of lot of buzz about it. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily new at the minute. Like it's been around for for a while, but it is growing. Like it is a it is a, a growth market, and it's definitely something that um, that it, that is going to continue to grow in the future. Um, essentially, it's where we take a three D BIM model, if you like, from the designers, um, and it was sort of stripped down to a, a, a bill of quantities. And these bill, bill of quantity items are dragged onto Primavera activity IDs or, you know, Synchro activity IDs, you know, wh- whichever software you're using, you know, essentially the schedule is mapped to the, the bill of quantity items in the 3D model. And what this allows you to do is see, you can a little play button and press play and you'll see the model being built up in real time. So if it's a bridge, you'll see the way the bridge is supposed to be built. If it's a school, you'll see the way the school is supposed to be built. Um, and it has a couple of couple of key advantages in terms of productivity, which is obviously if your program is wrong, if you have got the abutments going in before the foundation, it is immediately obvious. And it, you don't need to have a planner review it. Uh, the construction, the site manager can press play and go, that don't look right. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and actually something a planner might have missed um especially if they are one of these planners like uh, like myself that don't necessarily have masses of construction or engineering experience um they can instead of going through a pdf or a power bi report of a gantt chart or, or what have you they can visually see the program uh being built up the bridge the school the hospital whatever it is and go that's not the way it's supposed to be built you know because you can visualize it whereas if you're looking on a you know if you're already not technically minded um and you're looking on a chart you know a, a pdf it's hard to kind of visualize what's happening um on the flip side if you are technically minded uh, in terms of construction or engineering you'll get even more value out of it because you'll be able to look at it and go, if, especially if you're a visual learner, you'll be able to see, well, actually, if we do things, if we put this on this way, or we get this on first, we can do it. So you've got all, all of that and, and not just the planners, but you can now run a simulation and have 30 people in the room. So you, can, you can run everybody and get everybody involved in the program. I think one of the biggest challenges in the 4D construction market is the accessibility and um, so it's obviously needs a lot of you don't just need a planner you need plan skilled in 4d planning to be able to run it then the software itself is expensive um and you know and, and specialized so i mean i think there's there's, there's going to be a big market in the coming years for cloud-based um 4D planning solutions and applications that, that are accessible to everybody that can just run simulations on tablets. Um, there's going to be a lot, that's going to be a growth market, especially on site. 
um, and not just run the simulations, but comment on the simulations. We were saying about the guys on site at the minute, 4D planning works really well when you've got a bunch of construction managers sat in a room and you can put it up on a screen. But to the guys and girls out in the field actually doing the work, how often do they look at Synchro? Yeah, they don't. They don't. Yeah. They, in the real world, they, 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 there may be some flagship projects that are doing it. And uh, yeah, to be fair, they probably are. You know, there, there, are, there probably are companies that are, but wide, you know, widespread. Is it really widespread in the industry yet? I don't think so, and I do believe one of the barriers is a the the the, the the you know the, the the skilled planners to do it, and b um, the accessibility of the uh, and affordability on a on a large scale within the organisation of the of the of the four D planning software. The other ooh, before before I come off the topic of four D planning, the other big benefit is in delay analysis. You can obviously run the way the project should have been built and then you can run the way the project was built and you can quickly point out when things were delayed and why you know you were you, not necessarily why all of the time but you can see what the impact of not having the foundation to put in place at that time was you know you can see what the you know it, it becomes becomes obvious and you can quite easily demonstrate so i think that's that's definitely something um it's definitely something that's going to become more and more, more and more widely used, especially if the access issues are resolved, and it can be brought to like mass market within the organisation. When I mean mass market, I mean to everybody in the organisation that needs it, not just the people in the offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's that's a very that's a that, that, that's a very good point. Anyway, I, I think I, I think when if if kind of like um if they make four D planning, you know, if they make it like a, a more a, a more um cheaper tool to use you know i think a lot of companies will buy will buy into it like you said you know it's way expensive and maybe kind of a bit complicated as well because i've I, i've mm -hmm. i've seen like in my, in my in my current project you know we do for the planning as well you know but i think it's linked to beam as well you know you show you every everything about about the structure beginning to the end you know the project you see you see you see everything you know from start to finish mm -hmm. you know but Going going back to planning and you know good planners and things because I I I often hear this you know even listen to other podcasts as well you know project management podcasts as well saying you know mm. are good planners like gold dust you know like good good planners you know are all the planners good or or there are some that you know I met this planner you know and this planner is really really good you know what 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 do you think about you know project planners are like gold dust you know what is that to, what is that to you yeah I I often hear. Um... The phrase that the planners are hard good planners are hard to come by and it's something i've definitely experienced now on the other side of it running a planning consultancy um you know we we've hired you know a couple of people but uh, you know i put a put put an advert out for for a job got got 200 applicants and not many of you know i wouldn't have hired many of them it's 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 really um really difficult um and there's i think there's two reasons i think the first reason is that good planners are really, really know their market worth. Um, and thus, like trying to get them to jump ship is hard because they're in demand everywhere. The second one, and why I, I find junior planners especially hard to come by, because there's not a lot of them. Um, and I think it's a thing where people don't enter the profession. I think the profession itself as planning has got such a high high barrier to entry or a perceived high barrier to entry because P6 is such a, you know yourself, you get P6 open and people switch off. It's perceived as boring, maybe. And then it's also perceived as difficult. Um, and people get scared when they're teaching somebody new P6 because especially, I mean, I know we can create copy projects, but when you let a, a junior planner loose in your live project for the first time, you know, like it, you've got to be fairly confident they know what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Because yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. if, especially if, you know, you've got to, you know, you know, you can create a copy and restore it later. But if you've got a submission coming up and it's like, dude, please don't mess this up. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it, like, you've got it. There's a lot of, there's a high sort of um, level of, of, of intricacy with MP6 with everything called linked up. Um, there's a, there's a couple of reasons, I think, why why junior planners especially are so hard to, to call, and good junior planners are hard to come by. The first is they don't enter planning first for the reasons that we were just saying, um, that, that P6 is seen as boring, hard to use, 
Um, there's not a lot of, you know, not a lot of, there's a lot of training material out there, but you've got to be, you've got to want to be a planner. And I think that's where it comes down to, because a lot of people migrate over to planning from, um, they, they, they were looking to go into a project management type background. And I think a lot of it comes down to the title as well. And it's like project manager is infinitely sexier than planner. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's, you know, it just is like you can't. You know, oh, I'm a project controller. I'm a planner. You know, whereas a project manager, you know, sounds way more dynamic, sounds way more um, job title, especially when you're young. You know, and in a way, it probably is. You know, there is there is a lot more uh, aspects to project management that that you know that, that maybe you don't see in planning. Um, but there is definitely a. Um, there's definitely that kind of barrier to, to, to people joining. Uh, I think the other barrier is, um, you know, guys like me and you now who are slightly a little bit like, I mean, I've got planners that would still say, you know, I'm, I'm 30 now. People would say, that, you know, I'm still a kid. Do you know what I mean? But, but guys like me and you, you know, we're a little bit longer in the tough. We've been in the game for a few years. How much time do you have? Like when you're on pressure on an update to teach people, like you haven't got much time, have you? You know, you've got to, get that program out you've got to get that but you've got to make the time because if you can make a junior planner you've just increased your workforce by another guy or another another lass you know you've got you know you, you've got an extra pair of hands to help out but if you don't take the time to teach them you know you're going to be stuck doing it on your own you know you've got to you've got to take the time especially to pass on the best practices because you know they can learn it from youtube but the theory and the practice are very, very different. You know, you can't learn planning out of a book. No, no. You know, you, you've got to actually do it. You've got to make the mistakes. You've got to, you know, you've got to be burned a couple of times as well. You know, you've got to put a couple of bad programs in. Yeah, go, oh, you've oh, got, you got to probably break, you got to probably break the program at some at, at some point. <laughs> yeah, you've got. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Break the program and have to have to do it, pull an all nighter to put it back. Um, yeah, definitely. Like it's got to, it's got to be done. Um, and. But how often do guys like me and you take the time? And it's something I'm, I'm trying to get better at doing and, and take, you know, take the time to actually um, pass on what's been passed to us, if you know what I mean, through all these people that help guys like me and you. Yeah. yeah uh, to, and try to, and pass to, that on a bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. To be, to, to be fair, at the, at the moment, you know, there's, there's a training plan at work, you know, I I, I saw, I, I sort of train him as well, you know, getting mm. through P6, you know, project management and all that, you know. But, you know, he he's a, he's a bright light, you know, young, bright lad, you know, and, and, and he's picking up really, really good. You know, mm. I, I think, I, I think if they create scenarios of, you know, maybe senior planners or planners mm. training junior staff. You know, I, I think that would help the industry as well because, from from my own, from my own understanding, I, I don't I don't think organizations really have uh, a sector where or an office or part of the business where they train planners. You know, it's not something they do. You know, like you like 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 you said. You know, project manage like being a project manager is sexier. <laughs> You know, because yeah. it sounds, it sounds, it sounds more, more of you are in control of things, you know, mm -hmm. but being a planner is like, okay, is, is a planner. So what, you know? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, like and the kids, they want to, they want to go down the, the PM route and um, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it is, you know, it, we've got to take that time. Um, we've got a, a lot of the times actually you find when, when, you know, when, when we take the time to teach, um, teach junior planners, uh, and planners how to how to how to how to do things we solidify our own learning i mean i've I, you know recently you know trained two 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 planners uh I've trained i took on a a lady called rana and uh there's a there's a graduate at uh, mcdonald called cecilia and uh, you know, both about the same time i started you know teaching them and training them and one thing that becomes apparent is how clever these people are that come in and how different their backgrounds and the different questions they ask and um, you often kind of feel like, despite having, you know, like, like you know, so many years in the game, and, and, and you know, you, you, sometimes you feel like, yeah, you're making it. They'll still ask you a question, and you kind of like, what do you think the answer to that question is? I think this is what we said the other day, wasn't it? It was like you've got to, you've got they, yeah, they ask questions that make you think about what you learned, and. Um, yeah, and often sometimes they'll ask you questions and you find yourself repeating what you were taught. And then you think, why Why was it like that? You know, I, I've always done it. I've always done this best practice. 
but I don't know why. And you go away and then you research it and you find out the reasons, um, you know, and, and you, you, it makes you a better actually teaching and taking the time to get these, the, the, you know, the, the, the sort of next generation of planners in um, really, really helps you in a way because it helps solidify your own feelings and take you know, take time to reflect, um, take time to reflect and, 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 learn and grow and, and, and add to your skill set. Yeah. 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 Tom, absolutely. You know, but having, having said that, you know, what would you define a project planner as, you know, like define a project planner, you know, what is, is there a definition for it? You know, if there is, you know, what would you say is the definition for that? So this one, on this sort of topic, I think there's a traditional view. Um, and I think the traditional view is, you know, every project or every big project at least has a planner or a couple of planners and they're the, they're the people who sit and they, you know, import and look after, uh, and, you know, they might plan out the program in the first instance and then do the updates. You know, they're the planner, you know, you, you, it, it's a very traditional view of the world. But I think, especially with the advent of artificial intelligence, and I think in planning, sometimes we don't see what's coming with AI. Um, um, I know there's guys like, uh, guys like Dare, the end plan, and uh, Greg Lawton at Nodes and Links, they've made these softwares that do, you know, that, that have so, have some predictability uh, and do some, some, some sort of sort of QSRA type um, AI predictions. But that's not the kind of AI that I think is going to disrupt the industry. I'm not saying it's not useful. I'm just saying day to day doing your update, it's not. It'll be used in very specific scenarios to create value. But where I think AI is going to have a massive impact in the future is on the general update. So I think at the minute we have planner and they put things into Primavera. But I think in the future, everybody is going to be a planner on the job. I think that, that you know, why, why, why are we doing it this, this way? Um, and at the minute it's because we only have the, we can receive our passing information to the planner who inputs it into the system. And I think, at some point in the future, everybody is going to be responsible for their own bit of the plan, um, whether that's by, you know, uh, um, um, uh, a software or whether it's by voice recognition or whether it's by any any of the other sort of supplementary technologies that are out there. You know, uh, it, people will update the plan via, via just talking. They'll say, you know, tick that activity off or that's done or that's now next week. And the plan will update and you, you will be able to, to, to call down the plan. You know, Alexa, give me my project plan, you know. Um, and I think it's going to change the nature of, of planning. And um, I think it's going to turn everybody into the project planner. And I think it's going to come with its own challenges because do you really want everybody to have the ability to change the project plan you know you're going to have to look at like or who is authorized to, to 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 make these changes or to make these but i think these things are going to happen i do think maybe not like i've just said but the ai will impact our day-to-day -day lives as planners so, yeah, um, yeah yeah but, but when, it, when, when it comes to defining the word pre, a project planner like you know you've mentioned ai you know and, and all mm -hmm. that you know which mm -hmm. Maybe next next future, you know, you you we're, we're going to bundle all that into a project planner role as well, you know. But mm -hmm. define that word, the project planner. You know, what would you say the definition for? Is, is there is there is there anything like that? At the moment, I think I think it, it is. We're still sat in the traditional the traditional sort of definition of project planner, which is somebody who plans the work at the start of the job. And is then responsible for incorporating change um, and, and, and commercial protection, um, contract administration, um, and then re, re, re planning and, and, and reprioritizing the work. Um, but yeah, I, I do think yeah, go, going forward, that will um, that definition will will become more in, more all encompassing, and I think everybody on the project will become a project planner in one way or another. Um, yeah. I, I do. I, re I really do. I, I think project planners, the definition will change slightly and you will be up front on the project in the early phases planning the workout. Um, whereas the update part of the cycle will become more um, distributed amongst the, the, the team. Yeah, yeah, Tom, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, we, we've spoken about, you know, becoming a good, a good planner. Is there anything like a good planner, you know? But in terms of, you know, starting out, you know, and moving to other, other projects as well, you know, would you, would you say that, you know, if a planner moves across different projects, you know, 
would that invariably make them a good planner? I think it's I think it's essential. Um, in in all fairness, I think you can become an expert in your in one type of project delivery. You know, you could become an MEP planner and just do MEP. Um, and you, you know, you, you will become an expert in that. But in order to get a real breadth of planning experience, the best planners, and uh, you know, I, I don't actually include myself in this. I mean, I'm, you know, my, my, my experience is very, very uh, predominantly design based, but the best planners I've worked with have got uh, experience throughout the project life cycle. You know, they have been up in the concept phases of plans. They've been in the design phases. They've been in the construction phase. They have a holistic view of the entire project. Um, and they're not just, you know, sometimes not just one industry or even within an industry, different types of projects. And you'll always bring something. Um, the, 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 the cross industry is definitely something that I would recommend. Um, and I say, I, you know, I started my career out up at BAE um, and you know, we sort of big manufacturing environment, making military aircraft. And um, one thing that, that I, mean, I didn't even realize I was sort of learning it at the time, but um, it woven into the culture there is the concept of lean. Um, and you, you, things, uh, things like um, last planner, um I, I just they're everywhere and kaizen and continuous improvement and this um these concepts have woven into the fabric now i started did my first five years of my career there and then obviously when i come to construction i bring a little bit of that with me um and it turns out you know i was very lucky i bumped into you know just by chance um one of my line managers at logical was a, a guy called bruno motta and he's a he's a lean consultant and one thing that we we did uh did together was roll out um a last planner type system on a, on a design job, which normally you'd think last planner is like production. And if you were going to apply it to construction, you'd apply it to physical deliveries. But what we kind of did was reimagine design delivery as a sort of, uh, as a, as a factory style production belt, you know, a conveyor belt, if you like. And, um, we focused on getting the inputs. So getting survey data, getting ground investigation, getting, um, decisions of key decision makers feeding the machine feeding the conveyor belt um, and then tracking the work and making sure that we weren't you know we, we didn't want too much work in progress stuff we wanted to make sure that what was on the conveyor belt could be delivered and keep things moving and keep things, and we did see like big improvements uh, and something we just started doing uh, um, on, on on the job that I'm on now and within, um, so at the first month, I, when, I, when I always roll Last Planner out and done it in design, I always make sure that I don't tell anybody and I just measure what it is that we, what, what, how many promises. It's, it's essentially a promise-based system. And it's like, you look at next month or the, te- typically actually you look three months ahead, but I've kind of rolled a slimmed down version out. And we'll look at next month and we'll say, how many things have we promised to do? Then how many did we do? In its real essence. Um, and then you attribute each promise, if you like, to a last planner, the last person that is sort of responsible for, for planning that work at a detailed level. In production, it's seen as the um, the four person, you know, the, the last sort of person of authority on the factory floor in that section, you know, that's the last planner. Um, so, um yeah, so I always roll it out dry and just check what kind of program execution we've got. Uh, the average is about 30 to 35%. And funnily enough, we got 30, 33% that first month. The second month, the goal is to always improve, to see continuous improvement. And you, you make a promise for what you're going to deliver next month. You track how many you did and all of the ones you didn't do, you do a root cause analysis as to why. Um, and you, you assign a code and you track why are we not hitting our promises? What is stopping us? And you make sure you don't have the same mistake twice. Um, so you look and go like, what, what is it? Did we promise to do this when it wasn't in our gift? You know, have we promised to get um, this design finished when we don't have a resource or when, you know, Dave is on holiday 
well, you know, well, let's check the holiday calendar for that area to make sure that what we're saying, like, let's make sure they're there that week when they're promising you know, silly things, but things that when you actually start repeating that month on month, you get actual practical and it's really quite a practical thing it, it's silly things like that that cause project delivery you know, well you promised to get it out on the sixth dave wasn't here on the sixth so you know you were never going to do it were you do you know what i mean yeah. like you you would say you know um if you're in a project where where you do design you know you let it be mm-hmm. up design as well you know and you go to another project you probably do engineering, you know, go mm-hmm. to another project, you you work more with the QSAs, you know, mm-hmm. which is commercial, then you do. So, so invariably you, you are saying that, you know, if you, when, when you have all that, all that skill sets from different projects, that will make you a, a good planner, won't, won't it, won't it? Oh, a hundred percent. So um, there's, the, you know, working with, um, working with different companies as well, they, they do things slightly differently. Like everywhere you go, does things slightly differently, have different ways of um, different ways of viewing it, uh, different cultures. Um, and yeah, even like cross pollination with different, um, slightly different work streams. Um, mm-hmm. You're right. QSs are a vital part of planning. You know, if, if you get your QS on side, you're laughing. You know what I mean? Like, and um, understanding what it is they do and what it is that they, that they can bring um, that also, that also helps. Um and again, working on different projects with different contract types, um, you know, one of the things QS is, Q, you know, you, you'll see QS is acting very differently on a fixed price contract than will a cost plus contract, you know, and, and all different contracting types and different, it, all of this adds into the way that you might plan something and you, you reflect and how it, it has a an impact on the way that you might deliver uh plan to deliver a certain job um and it 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 all adds to you know if you're sat doing one specific type of project you'll only ever learn the knowledge for delivering that type of project you know Um, whereas yeah you do get definitely with the diversity of experience comes a diversity of different knowledge um some would argue maybe you get a flip side to that. Maybe you become jack of all trades, master of none. But I don't know. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I think the exposure to more more types of ideas gives you more tools in the toolbox, doesn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. What about yourself? What, what, yeah. What, what do you think on that? Yeah, on on that from on that on that for me, you know, I think uh, I think if you move to different projects, you know, I, I think you learn more. You know, my 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 background, you know, is highway smart motorways. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was, I was, I was on that project. You know, started on site on that project before I started my career as an assistant planner. So all mm-hmm. to, all together, you know, over four years on that project, on that pro- on that project, lent a great lot on that project. You know, now if, if you take me to a motorway job, you know, I I, I fairly know what to do. You know, but right now my current job is in wastewater management. You know, mm-hmm. I'm. I'm I'm seven, you know. So I'm I'm learning you stuff now, you know. Electrical, mechanical, you know, commissioning phase, you know, handover, all, all that, all that stuff going on. It's fairly new to me, but I would say that you know I'm gaining a lot and I'm learning a lot as well, you know. So it, it doesn't really make you a jack of all trade, master of none. Mm-hmm. F- for me, I think for me, you know, the more projects you work on, you know, the more experience exp- experience you you know you get you get you get you get you know how to how, how to work things as well because i've met planners that that they they, they work in they've 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 done highways right Mm -hmm. they've they've done water they've done rail they've Mm -hmm. done gas and oil you know they've done energy as well nuclear energy so i'm Mm -hmm. looking at them like oh my god this this guy's got like got a world of experience you know and and Mm -hmm. i I think from from for me it's it's something i also want to do in the future as well you know maybe move to another project and learn how Mm -hmm. things are done there as well because at the end at the end of the day you know it's 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 still a lot it's it's still a planning but it's just that you you need to know the product Mm -hmm. you know you have to know the product because if if you don't know the product for me there's no planning there Mm -hmm. yeah it's that engineering and construction knowledge that you pick i mean i like I came to it without, with very little, you know, coming from aerospace defense, but you pick it up, you know, as I said, as long as you've got either one, two of the other skills, the, the soft skills or the software skills, um, you can, you can, you can pick, pick up some of that when you cross industry, especially I think once you sort of, sort of, you've done a couple of projects, planning is planning. You've just got to get to know the product as you're saying and get to know, 
And you, 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 you'll pick that up once you, you, you get on the job. You find that planning anything becomes the same. It's a very similar process, as you say, in highways, as it is in rail, as it is in nuclear. You break the tasks down. You, um, you plan the job out. You get to forge the relationships with the key stakeholders. You you know you, you do the same things when you turn up on the job. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, basically, it's you, all, yeah, it's it's all it's all the same. You know, because you you sequence your activities as well. You know, mm-hmm. you you have your start to finish and all that. So it's the same. But mm-hmm. but 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 the key underlying point for here for for for, for me here is is you have to know the product. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to know what you're working with. You know. And you, you mentioned about, you know, quality, delivery and all that, you know, for you, you know, when it comes to time, quality and cost, you know, what do you think is most important, you know, to you? So it's a bit of a bit of a trick question for the, the for, for me, this one, because I think there's a there's an old saying about it. I think I actually learned this during my during my degree. Um, I think all three of them are the same thing. Um, and I think you have to learn to view them all as in so interconnected um, that they're basically the same thing. You know, the, the old saying, time is money, you know, like it, it, it's it, it's um, you can have something done quick and you can have something done cheap, uh, but it won't be good. <laughs> you know, you can have something done um, quick and you can have something done good, but it, you know, it won't be cheap. <laughs> you know, Um you know, and you can have something done cheap and you can have something done good, but it won't be quick. You know, if people will come and do it when they can do it. You know, they'll fit you in around other jobs. You know, it, it you, you can break it down to, you know, even like, um, you know, we, you look at it, we're, we're, we're looking at time, cost and quality from a, from a massive major project. You can look at it as fitting a kitchen or fitting a bathroom. You know, <laughs> you can have it, you can have it good and you can have it cheap. But you won't get it done quickly because your mate who's going to come to fit it will have to do it in his spare time. You know, he's not going to drop the, you know, he's not going to drop his work to come and fit your fit your new bathroom. You know, you'll have to come and do it, you know, on the odd weekend or after work. So you can have it done good and you can have it done fast, but that won't be cheap because anybody who can do it, do it good at short notice is going to be expensive. You know, like you, you, you can actually relate it to something a lot smaller and make it a lot easier to understand. But in that sense, especially at the start of jobs, when you're actually planning the job out, um, this is what you've got to take into account, isn't it? The the overall sort of strategic priorities of, of we can do it faster, but it's going to cost you more. You know, we can do it cheaper, but it's going to take you longer. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it, and sometimes it's being honest with people about, the, uh, you know, we can do it on time and on budget, but it ain't going to be what you want. You know, like you, you can, sometimes I don't think, I think, especially with major projects and you see it going over budget all the time, you know, there's that phenomenon where, you know, all major projects really end up being like three times more expensive than what you thought they were going to be. And a lot of the time it's because politically people aren't honest about this fact. <laughs> you know, I think, I think it comes down to at the, at the core of it. Like you, you can have whatever you want, but you can, you have to abide by the rules um, and the principles that are, uh, the inter, interrelationship between those three, those three variables. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, I know we've, we've spoken about, you know, how, how we started out, you know, being planners, you know, it was difficult, you know, in, in, the, in the beginning, you know, but I, I know I know there are people out there as well that want to get into this profession, you know, that want to be planners as well. For you, you know, what, what would be your recommendation to anyone that wants to get into planning, you know, that, that wants to become a planner, you know, like 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 things you've, you've learned, you know, in, in the past, you know, and, and you say to them, do you know what? you know, do this or do that, you know, this will work and that will work, you know, what, what will you tell someone I want to become a planner right now? To be honest, it's um, just, just start planning. <laughs> like, don't just, just, if you want to be a planner, like approach a planners will always need a helping hand. You know, every planner on the job during update week, they're all nervous wrecks. They're all stressed. You know, no planner sleeps during update week. You know, like, um, and I think can't if, tell if you're me, a, <laughs> you can tell me, you can tell me about that. <laughs> if you're a junior planner, maybe wait till after update week, but go and speak to your planner and ask that you want to help out. Ask them to give you something to do. Pick up the best, best way to get a job is to just pick a broom up and start sweeping. 
Do you know what I mean? Like on the site, on the tools, pick a broom up, start sweeping. And eventually somebody will notice that you're there and they'll go, tell you what, what's, why are we getting him to sweep? He doesn't need to sweep that up. Do you know what I mean? Come on, we'll get you, we'll get you doing this now. Come and do this. And eventually people will take you in. You know, if you make enough of a nuisance of yourself, if you keep knocking at the door, sooner or later, somebody's going to open it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, that's, it's been, been a, been a sort of guiding principle really. I think you can't, you can't ignore somebody that wants to learn like they, 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 they you just force your way in just like don't don't sit around and expect planners to 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 sit and uh, and and give it to you you know like but ask for the tools uh, ask for the guidance and they will help you you know like it, it, it's we 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 know there's a planner shortage and we know that junior planners are really rare or good junior planners are really rare so if you see one, a potential junior planner, you're thinking, I'm having them. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm, uh, you, you know, so I don't know. That, my, my, that'd be my, my recommendation, I think. Um, I don't know about you, Sue. What about yourself? What, what, would your be, what would your advice be to, to aspiring, aspiring junior planners? Yeah, aspiring junior planners, you know, I, I think my recommendation to them would be, you know, if you're already in the construction environment, you know, I think one, one thing is you, you have to go on site. You know, mm. there's no, there's no need, you know, you're, you're all being formal and you're just in the office, you know, making, mm -hmm. doing tea rounds, you know, which, mm -hmm. which a lot of them do anyway, like tea rounds and <laughs> you, you, know, you catch up with your friends, you, you go out mm. to socialize and all that, you know, which, which is great part of the job. But for me, I think you should work uh, because this is, this is what I've done and that, this is what has worked for me, you know, always go on site, you know, get close to the site engineers, you know, mm. if, even like you, you have graduate engineers on site as well, you know, get, get, get closer to them, you know, because one, one thing that I also, you know, found out was that, you know, most of the site engineers, they, they are the one that give, give updates to the construction managers mm. because most mm. construction managers, they don't, they don't go on site, you know? So, so if, no. if you are close to these guys, you know, and they, and they, and they go on site, you, you, mm. you definitely know what's going on on, on, that, on that, on that, on that job. You you know what's going on, this, the activity sequencing, you know, what's what's done and what's left, the next thing to do, you know. And, and from there, you you have a clear picture of procurement, QS, you know, design aspects as well. And then again, number one thing again, I, I would say is, you know, try to build relationships, you know, because mm. it's it's great, it's key, you know. If you want to become a good planner, relationship building it, it's one of the things you have to hold on to, you know, it's very, very important. You 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 100 right, especially if 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 I've got a junior planner that already knows all the site engineers, that I can just send to get an update. You know what's going on with this, what's going on with that. If they if they've already spent time building that network, or even if they haven't got the network, but I see they've got the ability to build that network. You know they they have that open and engaging personality that allows them to go and. Um, forge strong and real relationships with people you know a lot of you know yeah that's that is I mean, we, we've constantly said that throughout this throughout this, this this podcast that it is the relationship building aspect that is often underrated as part of a part of planning you know people focus on p6 because that is the that's the bit they think that's special to planning p6 is just a giant calculator at the end of the day right it's got input you press it you press equals or f9 Boom, it spits an output out. It's just a big fancy calculator. The planning goes on outside of P6. It goes on on site. It goes on in phone conversations. It goes on every time you speak with people. You know, you're constantly formulating and revising the plan in your head or on paper if you write things down or on OneNote or whatever it is that you're using to keep track of what's going on. Um, and yeah, it is, it's the ability to get out and, 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 and speak to people and be constantly on the move almost, constantly getting around the place and constantly chatting. Um, yeah, uh, if you've got that ability, that's, that's, um, that's something that will get noticed um, and, and would be definitely something that we're looking for whenever hiring a, hiring a new planner um or yeah just just a, a graduate looking to or if, if you're listening you've got those sort of skills and you've not maybe considered a career in planning maybe maybe give yourself you know give that a thought because i think that's that's something that we we um you can't really write it on a job advert do you know what i mean it's really difficult to nail it down you know yeah, you can say strong man. interpersonal yeah. skills and you can kind of get close to it but um yeah 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tom, man, it's, it's, it's been great, you know, having you on the show. But, you know, if you were in a planner, yeah, you know, if you were to do something different apart from planning, you know, what would that what would, what would that be? It's really funny because I, I was literally only thinking about this the other day. Um, and I've, I, I, I've always thought about it for years because like, I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I left school. And I, like, I, I bummed around for a few years, you know what I mean? Like, um, and before I, before I, you know, you know, got, got into, got into BAE and got into planning and I, I was only reflecting the other day. And, um, I think I'd have been a chef. Like, I, I really do. Yeah. I, mean, I love food, man. Like I love cooking. I love food. Um, and I like working under a bit of like a bit of pressure um and i think especially like i like going on rants like at least like once a week i'll have an epic rant and uh, uh, you know you see the chefs they do they do go off they do blow the top every now and again and have a bit of a rant and i think um that is that is something that i think i would probably have liked to have done uh, but i only realized it like like the last couple honestly the last week or so I think I'd have liked to have been a chef if I could have my time again, you know? Um, but yeah, that was it. What about yourself? What would, uh, what would you do? Yeah. If, to, to be honest here, Tommy, if I, if I wasn't, if I, if I had to go back in time, you know, and, and I, I could choose a career to be, you know, I'll probably be, uh, I would say maybe plumber, electrician, you know, or a gas engineer. Cause, cause I'm, I'm very hands-on as well, you know? So mm-hmm. I, I, I like, I like the fact that I can, because I, I do a lot of, DIY stuff at home, you know, I care mm. fixing and you know all that, you know. So mm. I, I would say I, I would choose maybe plumber, electrician, or a gas engineer. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, I mean you, you, that that sort of practical, um, practical, hands-on. Yeah, no, I can I can see that. That's, that's yeah, yeah. It's funny. I, I wanted to be a <laughs> planner. God, yeah. <laughs> and now you're a planner who wants to be a plumber. <laughs> oh, good man, that's 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 great, man. Uh, Tom, you know, for us to close, you know, close this, you know, what would be your last word to to people that want to get into planning? People that don't that that are not already in the industry, you know, they are thinking about that fresh ideas, you know, they are thinking about that to to get into this environment, you know, what would be your take on this for them? I think my take on. Um, especially for, for sort of fresh recruits into the industry, I think my take would be to, to, to give it serious, serious thought and to, to maybe understand a little bit more about what goes into planning. I mean, you get to work on some of like the, the, the best projects. You get to see some of the most interesting stuff and, you know, understand how things get built, how, um, how businesses operate, you know, how, how all of that kind of works. Um, the other thing I'd kind of point out to them is, you know, it's got, longevity like there will always be planners um the yes the planning profession will change but if i was you know a graduate leaving university now i'd be looking at the jobs market and i'd be thinking what's going to change over the next 20 30 years how can i pick a career that i know will still be around and as we're saying anybody who can forge that kind of human side and translate it to something business useful like planning You'll always have a job, you know. I do believe planners will be around in in twenty thirty years time. You know, I uh, you know I put my, in fact I, you know I have put my mortgage on it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> it's going to have to pay the bills, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So um, I'm yeah. not retraining now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> think, yeah think, thinking about yeah. the HS two job alone, you know, you know, you, you know that job is going to be around for years, and and it definitely going to need planners on that job anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't I can't comment, but um, it will uh, it will definitely. Um, you know, there's definitely a steady stream of work, especially with phase two coming online. Um, and yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, that, that has got real career prospects um, is, and it's interesting, you know, as I say, it, it's not just um, sat doing updates. There's, it's a very people focused, um, you know, very people focused game. And, um, you know, you get to work on some of the best engineering projects in the world. And at the end of the day, like, when you're a kid and you, you know, you know, you, you, when you dream of what you want to do, you know, you know, trains, planes, bridges, building, yeah, you know, automobiles, yeah, <laughs> that, wait, the film, yeah, like, like, 
I'm going to get myself down to Jaguar Land Rover, mate. Like, that's where my next job's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom. Yeah, yeah, Tom. You, 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 you sound busy. You know, you're a planner. You're, you also have the recruiting thing going on as well. You know, you sound as if you have a lot going on, you know, going on with you as well. You know, but what would you say motivates you? You know, what, what, what keeps you going on? You know, what makes you want to do more? You know, be more productive as well. You know, what is that thing that, 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 that pushes you to the, to, to, to the edge to do more? I think. One thing that um that, that got kind of burned into my uh, my DNA early in my career back in production was was continuous improvement. I spoke a little bit about like the uh, the last planner technique and, and bringing that and, and how that works uh, when when you when you swap cross industry you can bring value. But one thing in production that you 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 sort of burn in culture that's continuous improvement, um, especially with lean and the concept of like kaizen. Um, which obviously developed a, a Toyota. It's a Japanese word, um, and um, it, it, it essentially translates, um, or one of the concept, the, the core concepts of lean translates to continuous improvement. And continuously getting better at something is what sort of drives me on, like uh, at the minute, and, and, and constantly advancing stuff and, and, and pulling new innovations in. Um, and yeah, that's that's what that's what gets me out of bed in the morning at the minute. I think it's. Um, it, it's taking taking the the sort of planning profession and look you know I'm just, there are people doing way way more fancy innovations um all the time you know but picking up a bit of it and making my little bit of it better do you know what i mean and doing that every day every week every month getting a little bit better at what we do you know eventually you know if you carry on continuously improving you're going to end up in a, in a far better place than where, where you started you know yeah, and, and yeah. that's that's it yeah yeah, yeah, absolutely, Tom. You know, get you know, putting putting in the work. You know, improving your your, your skills as well. You know, as in to make you more employable as well. You know, you you, you just gotta you know improve your improve your skills. You know, and innovation as well. Like you said, you know, is is key is key as well. Is the thing that's going on. You know, evolving and it keeps evolving. You know, but but for you, Tom, you know, what is the next thing for you? You know, I, I know you you you're a very driven guy. You know, busy guy as well. You know, what is the next thing for Tom? So. I think the next thing, um, the next thing really is to get more involved with the artificial intelligence revolution that's going on. Um, maybe look to develop some software. Um, but what we what 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 we would look to do is um, instead of viewing um, AI as a black box that um, you ask a question and get a, a mythical answer, I want to have a slightly different view of it. Um, that kind of AI looks to replace human thought. It looks to go, um, and it does work in, 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 in very, very, in, I mean, the classic example I learned was, wasn't in planning. It was in, um, uh, cancer detection. Funnily enough, if you feed an AI enough images of a type of cancer, um, it can learn quite quickly to detect better than a, better than a human, that that is that specific type of cancer. But that only works in AI when you have a very narrow question. You know, when, you, when it is, is it this or is it that? You know, it can categorize things. But when you've got projects, there is no right or wrong answer. Sometimes you, 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 the information is so complex. I think you can't ask an AI, what should I do? Um, or if you do, you won't necessarily understand the decision. So what I want to do when I develop some software um, to help with planning is, is kind of throw away that sort of, and I don't want to use it like a P6 pun, but like Oracle, you know, the, 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 the ask it a question, you get a mythical answer. Um, I want to, um, yeah, you'll have to excuse the terrible planning pun there. I want to sort of throw that away and look at AI actually as a supplementary tool and look at how can we automate inputs? How can we make the schedule more accessible? How can we use AI in a practical way um, rather than an ask it a question way? Um, and that's something that I think we're going to look to do over the next couple of years. Obviously, can't give away too much detail at this time because, yeah. um, you know, I don't, don't, you know, don't want to give away anything that we're working <laughs> on. Um, but 
when it's ready, I'd love to uh, I'd love to show you, and we could um, yeah maybe Abs- organize Abs- a call and, and 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 you know when we're ready to launch, get get some promo material out there, you know. <laughs> Abs- absolutely, it's um absolutely you know I know a lot of guys are listening to this, you know, and and they also want to kind of like you know follow you as well, you know. What where what 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 is your 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 socials, you know, for guys that want to get in touch with you? So I think you can get me. The only one I really uh, the only one I really use is LinkedIn. Um, so um, I think my um, yeah, I think you 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 you've got my LinkedIn, haven't you? I think we can probably yeah, put yeah, it uh, put yeah, it in the description. Yeah, yeah I do I that. Yeah, I do that. I'll definitely uh, I'll send a send a link over and we can we can share it with the video. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No worries, mate. Tom, man, it's, it's been great having you on the show, you know, and, and I, and you, and you're wonderful. The answers will be brilliant as well, you know, and, and I know that a lot of guys, you know, that will listen to this or watch this, you know, will definitely get a thing or two from, from this, you know, me as well, you know, I've learned a lot as well, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm going to put this in my planning as well, you know, hopefully, you know, become a better planner in the future. You never know, you know, but, but Tom, it's been great, man. And I'm grateful for the time as well. Well, I agree, Kez. It's it's been brilliant, and I I can't wait to listen to the rest of the series and uh, listen to what the other planners come in because, guaranteed, you there's not a planner that I I haven't worked with that I haven't learned something from. Um, And if you you get planners on here talking talking about things, um, you know you're going to get all sorts of insights from the from the industry, and you know you really share. You know you're doing a really valuable thing, sharing the knowledge. Because how often do we planners get to sit down and and chat in depth like this? You know we're all heads in P6 all the time doing updates, um, and and you know this is something that we could have on in the background. You know when we're doing an update, listening to the the latest things happening in the industry, listening to the latest best practices, like drawing people on jobs, man. Yeah, I mean the kind of stuff that I, you know. I, I, I think it's it's going to be a really useful series. I'm really looking forward to um to uh to, to hearing what what everybody else is uh is, is going to bring. Thanks, Tom. Thank Thanks, you. Mate. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's been, been great, great, man. It's been great. Yeah. Thanks.